hear the name Ted Bundy, you would think of one of the most evil men in American history and also one of the most fascinating. Ted Bundy was born November 24th, 1946, believing his maternal grandparents were his parents and his mother was his sister. He was being raised to believe that his mother was actually his older sister. It was lie upon lie from the time he was very, very young. But rumor has it that isn't the only skeleton in Ted's closet. Although unconfirmed, it has also been suggested that his grandfather may in fact be Ted's biological father. If true, that would make Ted the product of incest. But it wasn't until the age of 15 that Ted learned the truth about his parentage. He stumbled across some documents. For the record, I'm watching something on the Roku channel, streaming network, I'm sorry, streaming networks now, um, called Murder Me Be Famous. She lies about it for 50 years. That's, that's enough to, to sort of question your love for your mother, I would think. Ted spends the rest of his adolescence trying to overcome For some reason, the first four minutes of this video for YouTube got so he erased. In the University of Washington so. in Seattle, it's Ted's chance at a fresh Sorry. start. He becomes involved in local politics and falls in love with a pretty young co-ed named Stephanie. Stephanie has dark hair parted down the middle, an attribute that all of Ted Bundy's future victims will share. Had a, a good future. He was interested in politics and worked in one of the campaigns as a Republican uh, governor, I believe he was. You can certainly enjoy having a beer with him, talking politics or whatever. Hey, it's on me. It's on me. <laughs> when he was handsome, articulate, and I think that's what makes him so captivating still. But in his junior year, things begin to crumble. The political campaign he supports fails, and his girlfriend Stephanie breaks up with him for not being focused enough. Ted is devastated by the breakup and drops out of school for the rest of the year. But he would eventually re-emerge with a new focus. He changes his major to psychology and is excelling academically and socially like never before. He also has a new girlfriend, Liz. But what Liz doesn't know is that her seemingly perfect boyfriend has a darker side. Ted Bundy was charming. He was intelligent. He was good looking. There was just one thing wrong with him. He liked to murder women. Ted Bundy had a type. Pretty young girls with their hair parted in the middle. 21 year old Linda Ann Healy, a college senior, has a drink at a local campus bar with her friends. And Ted has his eye on her. Guys, that's it for me. Hello? Okay, I'll get up at 5.30, remember? Okay, we'll call you after class. Okay, bye guys. Okay, bye. She is scheduled to announce snow skiing. Okay, so we're going to do the whole day. Bye, bye. Bye, Linda Ann Healy was not alone. To there were people sleeping in the next room. Am. She was really as safe as she could possibly be. stained nightgown from Linda Healy and hangs it up. He then takes time to redress her. He wraps her in a sheet, puts the bloody pillowcase over her head, and neatly remakes the bed. He took her body out while people slept in the next room. Hours later, when she doesn't show up to the radio station, they call and that's the first time anybody notices that she'd been missing. No, this isn't Linda. This is Kelly, her roommate. No, I don't know where she is. But then when the police came, they discovered blood, pillow, blood on the top sheet. Blood in the closet. 
so they had quite a bit of evidence that something had happened there. No body is ever recovered. Dental records will identify Linda from a jawbone found months later. Just her jawbone. Nothing else. The college girls were probably easier to pick up because they're willing to give people a chance to someone on the street maybe. And Ted Bundy was extremely creative as he finds ways to lure women. But he's only getting started. George Ann Hawkins, a freshman at the University of Washington, is a person who alley behind her sorority house. The aspiring broadcast journalist is just 60 feet from her door when she stops to help a stranger. Are you okay? Yeah, thanks. Just... Mind giving me a quick hand? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's just hard to carry these things. It's just crutches, you know? <laughs> yeah. Would you, uh... My car's right over there. You mind helping me? No, not at all. Right here? Yeah. Sure. I'm Ted, by the way. I'm George Ann. My friends call me George. This is very kind of you, George. No problem. Thank you. She went as far as his Volkswagen bug carrying some folks to his job. That's the thing. Ted Bundy's victims were good people. Upstanding college girls who were willing to be helpful. Where would you like these? On uh, the passenger seat, please. Sure. Oh, there is no passenger seat. <laughs> it wasn't just the thrill of killing. It was the thrill of pushing the envelope, pushing the limit. <laughs> Janet's spot, like many of the others, would eventually be beheaded. Only scattered bones will be found near a service road in Issaquah. Just hours later, Bunny returns to the same lakeshore and approaches 18-year-old Denise Nassau, who has stepped away from a picnic with friends to use the restroom. Excuse me, hi. Sorry to bother you. I'm just uh, trying to unload myself up from my car. And as you can see, I've only got one good arm. Denise's jawbone and her femur would also be found near Issaquah. But it is at Lake Sammamish where Ted Bundy makes his first mistake. There were a group, say, of three other women on the beach. One of those women overheard her say, Hi, I'm Jan. And he said, Hi, I'm Ted. The witnesses also see his car. Later they will tell police about a man named Ted and his beige-colored Volkswagen Beetle. Two or three people heard him say who he was. So now this mysterious killer has a name, Ted. He has a vehicle, a Volkswagen Bug. Police release a composite sketch Ted Bundy, and they set up a special tip line. So once the composite sketch was out, the tips started rolling in, and one person in particular recognized that face and recognized that name. Ted's girlfriend, Liz, reads the news reports that have Washington women in a panic. Eight women have gone missing in as many months, and no one knows where this killer will turn up next. But Liz thinks she has an idea. The more Liz thinks about it, the less normal the boyfriend really is. And the creepier he is. He stays up all night. He doesn't tell her where he's been. He's not interested in sex unless it's bondage. And if she doesn't want to participate in bondage, he gets angry. She called police and said, I think I know who the killer is. Theodore Bundy. But he goes by Ted. The call goes on a list of police tips. It is one of 200 coming in every day to keep the police busy. Meanwhile, two grisly crime scenes are discovered east of Seattle. One in the town of Issaquah, the other on Taylor Mountain. Ooh, 
in the history of King County or Washington State had there ever been two crime scenes like four skulls or skull parts are found on Taylor Mountain and no other bone. There were no back bones, there were no rib bones, no leg bones, no arm bones, nothing. The word is that Tokyo and Seattle police are proceeding on the assumption that there are more bodies out there. As a young detective in 1974, Robert Keppel leads the search that begins with the disappearance of Linda Ann Healy. Somewhere he disposed of all of the clothing, the purses, any of the stuff that belonged to any of the victims. He's gone. What was this man capable of? He could be anywhere. There were more questions than were answered when I found him. What we did have were victims that had been stabbed. Other victims had hip damage. This was something that was a habit, was a compulsion, and there's nothing scarier than that. Authorities determined that there are at least eight victims. The main function of the investigation was to see if there were other cases that may be related. Police assemble a list of 100 men who go by Ted and possess other possible traits linking them to the crimes in Washington. They investigate the names alphabetically, with Bundy as number seven. But Ted Bundy is no longer in Washington State. Ted Bundy has moved on. He's in law school in Utah. He's living his life there. The killing stopped in Seattle. And then they started in Utah. No less than three young victims are abducted and murdered in Utah, including 17-year-old Lori A. His parents called her the gentle free spirit. Hi there. to the Utah murders and tell investigators about a morbid interest in the bodies. He changes their clothes, has sex with them, and even takes pictures for trophies. So for Ted Bundy, the thrill kept going long after the murder, knowing that he could go back anytime he wanted. Obviously, this guy was driven by forces that you and I and most people don't have. He didn't look like a criminal. He didn't act like a criminal. He knew how to do the right things to appear the right way. As he continues to go unnoticed, Ted Bundy has evolved into the perfect killing machine. Oh, at AT&T, everyone gets our best deals. Aren't others doing that? Others say that, but not everyone gets the best deal. Like, what if I give you a lollipop? Then I give you our best lollipop. That's not fair. At AT&T, we think it's only fair that all customers get our best deals. And you get a choice of plans. She's having a good one. There's no traffic. All the AT&T is both new and existing customers are same best deals. Like up to $800 off our most popular smartphone. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. We all need help. Hold it. It's not always the same kind. Wait, wait. Maybe you just need a little. Maybe you need a lot. I expect me. She's got it, but she might need an extra hand later. And when it comes to taxes, h and Block can help a little or a lot. At h and Block, get the expert tax help you need, online and in person. Help is here. Near Salt Lake City, Ted stalks 18-year-old Carol DeRanche at a strip mall. He writes down her license plate number and approaches her as she leaves. Excuse me, ma'am. Is your license plate KAD L32? Yes. I'm Officer Roseland. Someone was trying to break into your car. They did? Yes, we have a physical description, but you'll need to fill out a police report so we can pursue the matter. Um, how do I do that? I can take you to the police department. It's right up the street. Um, right now? Yes, ma'am. I think that would be the best thing. Do you have, like, an ID or something? This way. 
every instinct in Carol tells her that something's wrong with the situation. But she's only 18, and she ignores that little voice. Sorry about that. And this is your army military look. 